but I've got uh, Rich Harshaw from Monopolize Your Marketplace on the phone with us today. And so um, I've known Rich, probably, I think it's been about seven years. I think I last, uh, when I first met you, Rich, at a, a CCN conference where you were on the keynotes. And I still remember that presentation that you gave about the, the shower heads and, and um, your, your trips and vacations about how that particular hotel pointed out those shower heads. And it's really about identifying, you know, what's kind of the obvious of how do you take something that most other people aren't talking about. And as a marketer, you speak about the obvious and, and show it that in, in a way that you can differentiate yourself. And then all of a sudden now it's, it's something, it's a, it's a really neat talking point. And so for those of you who haven't had an opportunity to, to have seen Rich talk or to be part of his, his blog that he sends out all the time or read any of his content, he is, in, in my mind, and you know, the number one authority on marketing to contractors across the United States. And he's been doing it for, I think, over 20-something years now. And he's had some really, really cool stories of where he's taken contractors that have um, hadn't had much success out there and were struggling. And then he turned them into these massive successes just by, hey, here's how you need to market your company and, and you know, give them a few dollars and he, he can accelerate where you're going. And I know you've grown some companies that now you're working with, the, uh, what, they're doing over 50 million in business. Is that right, Rich? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, companies that are doing that kind of volume have a lot of success factors. But yeah, we uh, took one to from about 40 million to about 180 million. Then they got bought out by private equity. So they're actually no longer a client. Took another one, uh, started about 30. They're going to hit 52, I think, this year. So yeah, those are companies that are doing a lot of things right. But there's a lot of smaller companies we work with uh, are latest thing that we really have been promoting is a, is a program called Make the Jump to $10 million, where we look at contractors that are doing, you know, anywhere from one or two or $3 million, generally more like two or $3 million and help them get it up to $10 million. So, I mean, that's a huge jump right there. That's really where most people fall off. I think one of the main reasons I wanted to bring you on the call today, because I know that Rich, you know, out of all the different classes I've been through that you've taught over the years and all the stuff I've read, you come up with some really, really creative stuff. And I think you understand contractors better than anybody else out there and knowing how to market them. And so I wanted to maybe get some of your thoughts and share some of your thoughts with um, some of the spray foam contractors out there about, you know, hey, if, if you were a spray foam contractor, Rich, today, what would you be doing with your marketing dollars and or marketing focus because I would guess right now that most spray foam contractors do not spend a lot of money on marketing. And I guess the, my first question to you is that, is that a mistake or are they on the right path and, and maybe just need to think of marketing in a different aspect? So I think what we can spend some time here today talking about is what should we spend that money on if we do spend it? Because here's the good news. Okay, well, let's start with the bad news. The bad news is there's not that many potential customers out there, right? So if you're a spray, spray foam contractor, uh, I mean, you tell me, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. How many builders are there that could potentially be clients? Maybe yeah. a few hundred? Yeah, there's maybe like that? Yeah, three or 400. Okay, let's just okay, use the number like 300 that. for our conversation today. Uh, I'll get my calculator out here because I'm going to need that. But uh, let's say it's 300. If you're in a smaller market, if you're in Knoxville, Tennessee, maybe that numbers 100 or 150. If you're in a huge market, like, I don't know, somewhere in California, that's a large market, maybe it's 500 or 1,000. But let's just use the number 300. That'll be good for us. Because here's the good news. The, the bad news is there's not that many potential customers. The good news is every customer you get is worth a fortune, right? That's true. So you look at that and you say, okay, how much is the average customer worth? I know it's going to vary. If you've got 300 potential customers in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the very largest potential customer is probably doing thousands of homes per year, maybe a thousand, yeah. two thousand. The smallest guy on that list, not talking about onesies and twosie guys, but maybe it's a company that's doing, uh, I don't know what, 50 a year or something like that. So that's your range. But if your average is, let's say, I mean, you tell me what's a good sized uh, contract for somebody to have in your industry? Well, I, I think on the, on the spray foam side, you know, it's going to be those smaller, especially for the smaller size spray foam contractors, they're, they're going to be focused on the smaller custom home builders, the guys that build anywhere from five to, let's say, 50 homes a year. And, and that's going to be kind of their sweet spot right, let's there. Use, let's use the number 20. Let's use the number 24, two a month, okay? What, what's the average job worth? See, for me, it always starts at the calculator because here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out what it's worth. 
we're going to figure out how many prospects there are. Then we're going to figure out how much money we can afford to spend. And here's, I'll give you a preview. It's kind of a spoiler alert. You can afford to spend a lot more money on a per prospect marketing campaign than you think. And I'll tell you what to do and how to spend that money. But let's start with the numbers. So we've got 300 of them out there. Let's even make it smaller because maybe some of those guys are too big and it's not maybe necessarily realistic for some of your, for some of your customers, Alan. So let's say that yeah. there's a, let's just make it 200. I don't care. And there's 20 uh, homes per year uh, for a good customer. How, how much is each deal, deal worth? Well, I think it's uh, home is worth how much? Yeah. And it depends on the market, but you're probably anywhere from, you know, four to $5,000 on a 2000 square foot residential house is I think is what the, the contractors would, yeah, would be charging. Five, somewhere. Okay, I'm going to use the number of 5,000 because it's easy math. And sure. out of that $5,000, how much is margin? Uh, they're probably running, uh, you know, the, the cost of the product is going to be half that. So, you know, 50% and then they're going to have their labor and overhead that they got to pay from that. They don't take overhead right. just quite yeah, but take labor. How much is labor? So if, if it's a $5,000 job, subtract the labor and the materials. How much is margin? Maybe 2000 Yeah. I'm probably the wrong guy to be asking on that because I don't know those numbers that well, but <laughs> let's just but you know what? Uh, you say. If you're some guy that's out there watching this and you're saying, that's not accurate. Those are my numbers. That's okay. Yeah. Just write them down and, and uh, make them your numbers. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to see the average client has 20 jobs per year and has $2,000 margin. So simple math says there's $80,000 in margin. That's a lot of money. I yeah. mean, you've got, if you get 10 of those, you've got a million dollar a year margin business, you know, and then what do you got on top of that? You got some insurance, you got some cell phone costs, a truck and some insurance, you know, I, it's not that, I mean, that's a great business right there. I mean, that's a fantastic business right there. So let's take a look at it. So here's what I love about this business. This is a business to business model. This is completely different than what I would normally do for an HVAC contractor, a window, siding, roofing, kitchen, bath guys. Those are all, all going business to consumer. We can go on pay-per-click, internet, radio, TV. We can do all those kinds of things. None of that applies to this conversation. Here's what applies to this conversation. If there's 200 potential customers out there, it's as simple as this. Identify who they are, call them. You say, well, how would I call 200 guys? Well, let me break it down for you. Call five of them a day. If you call five of them a day in 20 days, guess what you did? You called 100. So call all of them. And here's what we want to do. We want to find out who's the person over there that's responsible for this decision. What's their name? What's their email address? And what's their mailing address? That's all you need to know. You don't need to know how do they like their current supplier. You don't need to know what kind of price point they're at. None of that you need to know. And here's why. Because if they have a current supplier, which they all do, right? Yep. They're going to stick with that supplier unless there's a problem. Let me give you an example. I live in a house here in Texas and it's about an acre lawn and it's got a pool and it's got all this like edging and stuff. And I hate the outdoors. I hate mowing the lawn. So I hire a company to come do it and they do it. And they've been doing it for years and years and years. They do a great job. It's about $500 a month for my lawn. And here's the best thing about them. I never have to think about it ever, never, never. They're just awesome. Now I get a, phone call last, gosh, what about October from the guy that owns the company he says, Hey, uh, you're going to need to find a new company because we've decided to do commercial only from now on. We're not doing residential. You've got one month, then we're, we're done. Okay. So now I got to find somebody else. So I started looking around. I started trying to find somebody and uh, I finally find some guy. I don't even remember how I found him. I hire these guys and guess what? They're terrible. They, their lawnmower isn't sharp. So when they mow my lawn, it's got like ridges where the grass didn't get cut. Then I've got this wrought iron fence around my driveway and they killed all the grass around it because they didn't want to weed eat. Now I'm somebody that's looking, okay? Now here's the question and here's what's interesting. Who was marketing to me during the last year, two, three, four, five years so that if something happened to my relationship with my existing company, in my story, they quit. But in a lot of other stories, they don't quit. What happens instead? Something happens. They don't do a good job. There's a problem. There's a billing issue. There's a quality issue. The guy doesn't show up. There's a timing issue. You're a custom home builder. They're supposed to be there on Tuesday. They don't get there Tuesday. It throws your production schedule off. And they start having these cracks develop in the relationships. Every custom home builder knows this. They've got good relationships with contractors, and they've got crappy ones. And there's cracks that start to develop over time in some of those relationships. And then the radar start, starts going up and they start looking. And so all you have to do as a spray foam insulation contractor 
is make sure that when somebody's radar goes up, and I'm going to make you an ironclad promise, their radar will go up. When, when will it go up? Well, it could be today, could be next week, could be next month, could be next year, could be five years from now. But if you've got 200 of them, the simple math says they're going to have, out of the 200, some of them are going to have cracks in that relationship this year. And the key is when those cracks start to develop, where am I as a spray foam contractor on their consciousness and on their radar? And here's the reality for most of the people watching this presentation. They're not anywhere. Their best case scenario is they've tried to call on a guy. They maybe saw him at an event. They tried to make a phone call. But when that crack starts to develop in that particular relationship, they don't really know who to call. So they start asking other contractors. They start asking other people. They start kind of looking around, looking for referrals. Here's what I would recommend. Now let's get back to the numbers. So you got 200 potential customers out there. And let's assume that during the coming year, 10% of them are going to have cracks in the foundation of that relationship. What is that? 20? Yep. Here's what you do. You look at it and you go, okay, if the average deal is worth 80,000 bucks and there's only 200 guys, then we got to look at it this way. How can we stay in touch with them? What are the possible mechanisms for staying in touch? Well, here's one. We can call them on the phone. Well, here's the problem with calling people on the phone. They're never going to take your call. Like by the yeah. third time you call them, they're going to hate you. Yeah. Home builders are some of the hardest people to get a hold of too. You know, I, I, I think it's about a 30 to one ratio in the, in the phone calls that I've made to home builders that you'll actually get them on the phone. So you, you got to be willing to, to commit to putting in a lot of hours and, and dialing the numbers a lot to get, to get the but numbers. Here's, that, get the, here's the problem with that. You get, you get through to one out of 30 of them. And what's the chance that, you got a hold of a guy that has a crack in the foundation of that relationship with his current spray foam installation contractor. Well, according to our numbers, it's 90% likely he doesn't. So you yeah. spent 30 phone calls to get one guy and you have a 90% chance he doesn't even want to talk to anybody about it because it's not a problem. Yeah. Oh, but my prices are better. He's, he doesn't care. Why would he want to risk switching to you when the current relationship is fine? He doesn't. Well, I, I'm going to be cheaper. Well, he doesn't care because he's already got the other guy's price built into his cost model. So we got to wait for the cracks to develop. Okay. So phone is not a good way to get a hold of these people. What well, is another way? Email. Now, email is good because it's free and it's easy. So it's worth doing. Problem with it is something like 10, 20%, if you're lucky, will get opened. The other yeah. 80% won't ever get opened. So, well, here's another way mail. And it's funny, we're in, 20, we're in 2018 and everybody's like, oh, mail. Mail, know, such old technology. Uh, yeah. But here's the real question. Okay, I want you to tell me how you're going to get in touch with people. I've asked this question to hundreds of business owners who didn't like the answer of mail. And I said, okay, well, you tell me how you're going to get in touch with them. How about radio? Well, it's insanely inefficient. There's 200 contractors and I'm going to pay to talk to whatever, 30,000 people so that maybe those 200 will hear insanely inefficient. That's, that's a no. Uh, industry publications. Industry publications come out how often? Once a month. Nobody reads them. If they do read them, they're not reading the ads. Probably not a good fit. Website. Well, why would somebody even, how would they even find your website? And people run out of ideas. Well, I'll go, I'll go knock on their door. Well, they're not there. So that's worse than calling probably because it took more time and effort. So now you're just mad. Here's what you need to understand about mail. Mail gets delivered. Okay. Now, here's how you overcome the objection that people on this presentation are having right now of, yeah, but I don't pay attention to the mail. And it's junk mail. I just throw it away. Well, here's how you overcome that. You overcome it with two things. The first one is consistency. And the second one is frequency. So number one, we want to make sure that we're hitting them with mail on a consistent basis. Frequency, we want to do it often. So here's the question. How often? And the answer is it's really a math equation again. So let's do the math. Let me uh, say hypothetically a mailer, and I'm talking about a postcard mailer. I'm going to tell you why I like postcards. I don't like letters because when somebody sees your letter for the 13th time, they see the return address on it and they go, oh, I've already seen stuff from this guy and they throw it away and it, nothing is communicated other than an, an attempt. Postcard has an advantage that I call left hand, right hand, trash can. So let's pretend like this notepad here is a postcard, which clearly it's not. It's a notepad. But when they get that, it goes from their left hand to their right hand and into the trash can. And while that's happening, I'm able to communicate something to them. Left hand, right hand, trash can. And my trash can is literally right there on the right side. So then it becomes a matter of, well, what can I afford to do? And how often would it make a difference? Okay. So 
This is wall. This is called wall drug. I'm on vacation with my. This is 2005, and uh, we're driving across the country, and uh, as we're heading from Yellowstone Park over to um, what do you call it, uh, Mount Rushmore, we start seeing these signs. It's about a nine-hour drive, and we see probably during the course of that day, probably saw four or five of these signs that have the thing on it called wall drug, and I'm thinking, what is that? I, I have no context to even know what wall drug is. Well, we get there to uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. We look at the uh, Mount Rushmore, and uh, it, it's fine. The next day, we're going to drive across the state of South Dakota from Rapid City to Sioux Falls. It's about a five-hour drive on Interstate 90. As we take off, we take off just after lunch, and I start to be absolutely bombarded by billboards for this thing called Wall Drug. You say, well, what do you mean bombard bombarded by billboards? And here's the answer. I estimate it's, it's a 50 mile drive from Rapid City to what turns out to be a place called Wall, South Dakota, which is where a, a tourist trap called Wall Drug exists. It's a 50 mile drive, and I estimate there was 80 to 100 billboards in that 50 miles. Now, it's Interstate 90, so I was driving about 90 miles an hour. Do the math on that. I don't know what it is, but it's something like every 30 seconds, billboard, Wall Drug, Wall Drug, Wall Drug, Wall Drug, Wall Drug. It was insane. Now, I know everybody's seen this kind of thing when you're driving cross country. There's, they're not the first people that have ever done this. But what is insane is that every single billboard was different. So they talked about their bronze statues and they, they have dinosaurs there and they have free coffee and donuts for honeymooners and they have lunch specials and they have silver dollar display and all Indian artifacts. Every billboard was different. One after the other, 80 to 100 billboards in about 30 minutes. And I was totally blown away. Here's what I found out. The percentage of cars that stop at Wall Drug on Interstate 90, 70%. That's insane. That's insane. But here's the question. And we're going to this issue called frequency. Remember, consistency and frequency. So from a frequency standpoint, if Wall Drug were to reduce the number of billboards, let's say it was 100 just for grin's sake. I don't know exactly how many it was. If they reduce the number of billboards from 100 down to 50, would that make a difference in that ratio of 70% stopping? It could. Probably, I mean, 50 is still a lot. That's a yeah, lot. 50 is a lot. Let's say they dropped it to 25. It's 50 miles, 25, that's one every two miles. I called the owner to do a little research on this, and he said, I don't even know how many we have. I just know how much they cost. But they did just increase him over the years. years. And here's what, here's what the guy knows. The guy named Ted Husted III. I mean, he's a genius and he knows it. And here's what he understood. He understood that there's a tremendous amount of power and frequency. Because you get to a point where people cannot resist. They can't resist. So if the, uh, if the number was 25 in a 50-mile stretch, that starts to be fairly, I wouldn't say common, but it's not unheard of. If it's 10 billboards in 50-mile stretch, that's fairly pedestrian. Two billboards, nobody's going to notice it. If there's no billboards, then clearly nobody's going to even know that that place exists, let alone stop at a clip of 70%. So we're going to take that principle of, of frequency that was illustrated in this thing called wall drug. I'm not asking you to put billboards out. Obviously, that's dumb in this situation. Here's what I am asking you to do. Put little billboards that are called postcards, postcards yeah. and put them in the mailbox at an alarming rate where people cannot help but say to themselves, my gosh, there is a spray foam insulation contractor who's in my face. So let's run the math on it. Let's say it costs 50 cents per postcard. Okay, here we go, 50 cents. And let's say you sent one every week for a year. That would be 50 weeks. That's $25. And let's say that there was 200 of them on your list. That's $5,000. Look what I've done with $5,000. I've talked to, through the mail, Every single one of my potential prospects, every single week for a year. Now, let's go back and let's run the other number, which was critical at the beginning of this call. What's the average job worth? What's the average new customer worth? And the answer I think we came up with was $80,000 in margin, not $80,000 in sales. I don't even care how much the sales are. I care how much money you make. So here's the question. If we did that for a year, 50 uh, 50 postcards a year to 200 prospects is going to cost about five grand. Is it worth it? Would it be possible? Remember, we also hypothesized that maybe 10% of the 200 would have a crack in that relationship during the year. Guess what happens when they start having a crack in the relationship? They start to remember those postcards that are coming in. Now, some people say, well, 
they have, you know, a gatekeeper, somebody that looks at their mail for them. So they won't ever actually see that. Well, guess what? If they trust that person enough, it's probably a secretary back at the office. We can actually be marketing to that secretary. They're going to be seeing it as they go, oh, another one of these left hand and right hand trash can. Now, what do we say on the message? So the answer is the most important thing we want them to know is that we're, well, what are the problems that custom home builders have with spray foam insulation contractors? I think it's going to be, well, if, if it's somebody they're already doing business with, it's probably not, like you said, a price issue because they've already factored that in that at one point in time they were close to being the low bid or, you know, hey, they met the low bid plus they, they gave the service that, that that particular builder wanted. So if it's going to be, you know, what are what is the potential for the cracks that are going to show up? It's going to be, you're typically going to have a guy that used to give good service and, and show up on time and maybe he's not showing up on time. Maybe his, his job site isn't as clean as what he used to keep it. Maybe the, the applicators aren't doing a good job filling areas. He's, they're constantly calling him back because they forgot you know, a particular part of the house. Um, they're not following instructions very well. Their, their work just looks like crap. I mean, there could be a number of reasons why, you know, that kink in that armor appears. I can always summarize it into a half a dozen or less points. So here's what they're going to be. Number one is reliability. They're not showing up when they're supposed to. They're not available when they need to be. That's number one. Number two, Absolutely. it might be some kind of a quality issue. They're not doing the job right. There's a problem and it's causing them problems. Number three, there can be some kind of a billing issue or some kind of communication in, in that regard. Billing quality and reliability issues. Yep. That's probably a good, yeah. And then there could yeah. be potentially some kind of price. Maybe there was a price increase that came in. Hey, you know, we've been doing business for four years and uh, we're going to raise the price. And that might make the radar go up. Okay. So that's yeah. it. So here's the question. Well, what should we talk about on these postcards that we're sending 50 times a year or the emails that we're going to send once a week? And the answer is, well, we're reliable. We show up when we're supposed to. We do the job right like we're supposed to. Our customers love us. We don't have billing issues. Our pricing is what? Reasonable. Reasonable. That's it. This is not rocket science. This is actually really, really easy. Everybody that's watching this presentation already knows the things that they need to be talking about. So here's what we do. We go out and we find customers that we have that like us. And we say, hey, do you think that we're reliable? Well, yeah, I think you're reliable. Okay. Are we more reliable than some of your other contractors? Yeah. Would you think it's safe to say that out of the uh, 300 homes that we've done for you that we've never missed a single deadline? Well, yeah, I think that's true. Okay. In the 300, I'm writing this now, in the 300 jobs that XYZ Spray Foam has done for us, they've never been late one single time, comma, no, never, period. Signed, Bob Davis from ABC Custom Homes. Would you be willing to say that? Yeah, there yeah. becomes a great testimonial. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Or you could, it doesn't even have to have that much proof. Maybe it's just this. We're always reliable and on time. We never miss, you know, whatever deadlines or we never you know, miss whatever. We just say it. Because here's what happens. When you start to talk with authority and when you start to talk with power and you start to talk with precision, people believe you. People start to believe you. Now, if somebody watching this presentation kind of sucks and they don't really show up when they should and their quality isn't that good, well, you deserve to suck and you deserve to not have business. That, I can't help that. But here's what I can help. If you're actually good, look, nobody's asking for perfection. Everybody knows that things go wrong sometimes. But when things go wrong, how do you deal with it? Do you, do you react well? If the restaurant burns my steak, I'm not upset unless they try to pass it off as if it were cooked right. If they come out and they say, hey, we're so sorry, Mr. Harshaw, let us do that again. And by the way, you know, it's on us today. Great. I'm a happy guy when I walk out. No one's, no one's demanding or requesting that you be perfect. But here's what we are asking. You got to be good at what you do. You got to deliver what you say. And then we just start talking about what the problems are. And we say that we overcome those problems and we solve those problems. And we put it in their mailbox today and again next week and then the next week and the next week and the next week. And the next week, 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 and the next week. And see, I could say in the next week for 50 weeks. And by the time I got to saying it, and the next week, and the next week for the 50th week, you'd look at me, Alan, and you'd say, My gosh, I get it. And that's exactly right. By the end of the 50th week, here's what they're, these people are going to say, Okay, I got it. But guess what we're going to do after the 50th week? Do we're going to go another year. And we're going to yeah. go another year. And we're going to go another year. And after five years, not only will we have picked up five or 10 clients, everybody that we could possibly want to do business with knows exactly, exactly who you are. Yeah. Who we are and who, why we're different, why we're better. Do you, you know how Coca-Cola makes billions of dollars? You know how Apple makes billions of dollars by doing exactly this. The only difference is 
instead of having to market to the entire world, 7 billion people, Coca-Cola and McDonald's, you only have to market to 200 people. It's, it's eminently more affordable. Yeah. It's really affordable. It's very easy to afford. That's it. There's nothing else to do. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's, there is no other plan. That's the plan. Now, let me tell you why people fail with this plan. I've seen, people, I've seen so many people fail with this plan. I'm going to tell you exactly why they fail with it. They say, okay, Rich, that sounds good. I understand. I don't know what else to do. So you seem like you know what you're talking about. I guess I'll try it. Okay. So here's what they do. They send out the first postcard. Nothing happens. They send out the second postcard. Nothing happens. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. About the fourth or fifth or sixth one, and they don't get any phone calls, they start to get really nervous. Yeah. And then about the seventh one, they call me. This is not working. Nobody's calling. Have you ever heard of a book called uh, How to Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive by Harvey McKay? Oh, I, I love Harvey McKay. He's one of my, my favorite authors. I think that book came out in, what, 88? 87. It's an maybe. old book. Guys I like us it. remember that book when it was business. not that old. So if you remember Harvey McKay, he tells a story. Now, his, his business was the envelope business. Remember that? Yep. And he would talk Absolutely. about they would send salespeople out to follow their competitors' trucks around and all that kind of stuff. Here's something he said that has always stuck with me, and I think it's great advice for your customers. He said, if we started to pursue a new client, again, remember for the envelope business, we're talking high quantities of envelopes. He said, if somebody would switch to us in less than six months of our pursuing them, we didn't want them for a client. He said, because they switched too easy. He said, we wanted people that needed to be wooed, that's a weird word, but wooed for longer. They need to be pursued. And you're not going to have people just drop everything and call you because you sent them seven lousy postcards for a month and a half. They're not going to do it. Number one, if there's only 20 out of 200 that are going to have cracks in the foundation, first of all, the cracks in that foundation are going to be of varying sizes. It's not like everybody's foundation crack becomes giant on day one. Some of them are small. You have to stick a wedge in there and you have to open them up a little bit. That's what these 50 mailers in a year are doing. Okay. Number two, if there's 20 in a year, that have a little crack, well, in the first month and a half, math would say it's only like three or four. And out of those three or four, they never heard of you until this mailer. Maybe they didn't even see the first four mailers. It takes 50. How many billboards did it take Wall Drug to get 70% of the people to stop? Answer, 100. 100 yeah. And, and I think that's, that's what... Keep it up. Yeah. Go ahead. Because I, I think that is one of the biggest mistakes that um, a, a lot of companies have that don't really understand marketing that well is that they think it's a short game. And, and I think a lot of that, especially today, I think it's more impacted by, well, can't you just put up a banner and I get clicks and I get, I get leads from that? But when you're looking at building these, you know, trying to build a long-term relationship or, or build your brand out there in um, the marketplace... And using some of these older methods like, like mailing and things like that, it is a long game. And you, there, there is no one and done because that guy is not looking for a customer tomorrow. Like you said, you know, it, it, he's going to eventually start looking for you know, somebody else to, to be his vendor to, to go out there and install a spray foam. But it, you know, the chances of hit, that being tomorrow is going to be very low. And that's why you got to keep in front of them over a long period of time. And that this is not a pay-per-click game. This is not an immediate response game. Only from the aspect, it, now it will be if you can get your, your brand in front of everybody else. So, he, so every single builder in town knows who, who you are so that when they have any problems or issues or, or, or challenges with their current spray phone suppliers, they already know who they need to call. Or at least, hey, I want to at least get a bid from this guy. This guy is constantly in my face. And he's talking about how good he is. These are all the factors, like you said, that I'm having challenges with my current spray foam supplier. And so maybe, maybe now is the time for me to give him a call. But, but you got to constantly be in front of them. Otherwise, you, you're not going to have that opportunity because they're go- at that point, then they're going to go out and be uh, you know, proactive about finding somebody. But, but you don't want to be in that, that spot where you know, they have no idea who you are and you're making, trying to make a cold call for the very first time and then hoping that they're going to you know, give you a chance to bid the project. So 100% agree that's with you on that I mean, one. That's, sure, that's, just, that's just frustration waiting to happen. So let's review a couple of key points on this. Key point number one, what, what else were you going to do? Th- there's no good answer. Re- remember, I said earlier, I've asked this question to hundreds of, of business to business, business owners. And the answer is that they don't ever have an answer. Well, we're going to send our salesmen out. Okay. So here would be my recommendation. Okay. Whatever you were going to do before you heard me say this. Okay. Keep doing that for the next two years. Meanwhile, can you allocate over the next two years $10,000 to this marketing program? $10,000, even if it results in no new customers. 
Can you spend $10,000 over the course of two years? Let's do the math on that. $10,000 divided by 24 months, it's $416 a month. If you can't spend $416 per month for your marketing program, here's my advice to you. Quit! <laughs> How, how, what, what is your plan for growing your business? You don't have one. So just commit it, spend it, forget about it. Don't look at the, you know, the, the phone calls every single day. Well, geez, I didn't get, I didn't get it. You need one new customer to make $80,000 in margin per year for the next, how many every years they're going to be your customer. Yeah. What, if you got one customer every, what is that? Every 16 years. Yeah. For it. yeah I think for, for most of these guys, 80,000 might be what their, their total uh, sale is for the year. I mean, I think that would be a good, you'd love the land a builder like that. And so our numbers are probably off on that, but let's run it with smaller but, numbers. Let's say the average margin is only a thousand dollars per job and yeah. there's only 10 jobs per year from each builder. That's still $10,000 a year of margin. Yeah, that's a lot. You know what this is called? This is in marketing what I call an unbreakable equation. You cannot break this equation because here's what I mean by that. If you actually did what I'm talking about, if you actually had the guts to roll with it and to spend that $400 on those 200 prospects each and every week for the next two years, it cannot fail. It cannot fail. Here's why it cannot fail. Human nature. We've got 6,000 years of recorded human nature. We know that relationships go bad. We know that cracks develop in the relationships. We know that people start looking. What percentage of marriages fail? 50. What percentage of spray foam insulation contractor relationships fail over the course of 20 years? 100. <laughs> Holy darn near all of them. Yeah. I mean, come on. You just got, it's like you said, you got to play the long game. If you stop short, then you're going to continue to flounder around and be pinballed around for forever. This is a plan that actually works. It cannot fail. You just have to have the faith in it and, and roll with it. And here's the neat part about it. Your worst case scenario is you're out $10,000. That's not a lot of money to be out over the course of two years for something that has a 99% chance of making you large dollars. Yeah. And, and I think that there's not a lot of people out there doing it, which I think is going to help it even stand out even more. Let me be more specific with you on that, Alan. Nobody else is doing it. I, I 100% guarantee you, you've got zero competitors that are doing this. None. Yeah. Zero. You're the only guy. It's an easy plan. Yeah. Marketing is, it, it's just about understanding the numbers, understanding human nature. And it really isn't that hard. Now, you know, how do I put together that postcard and what should I say specifically? And yeah, I know you said just talk about the problems, but I, you know, it's not my thing and I'm not really good at it. I get that. I mean, that's, that's, that's something that you might need to, get some professional help with. Yeah. Is that something that, that you're, cause I know, um, cause that will be the next question. And, and I know I, I, I'll get the phone calls and stuff like that. Hey, can you help me? Yeah. I saw your guys just think, can you help me put through the cards? And I'm like, you know, I really don't have the staff to, to do something. Is that something that, that your company could help with if, if my contractors are interested in, Hey, I'm, I, I love this idea about this mail card. It can, I mean, cause I, I, you told me what to say on them, but I imagine I can't make the same card 50 times. I'll probably have some of them that'll be the same, but I need some type of variety so that we have a little bit changing message. So yeah. it doesn't look this. Is that something you could help the, the, my contractors out with if I sent them to your uh, email address and website that we could put on, on here? Yeah, that'd be fine. I mean, realistically, you probably need about 15 unique cards slash email okay. messages, about 15. That's all you need to sustain that kind of a project. Yeah, think about it. If you got 15, that's that's basically four months of rotation. That's plenty. Yeah, that they're going to forget about the, the old ones. And the, the main thing is just get that those those three or three key points across, that you're going to be there on time. You have fair and reasonable pricing. Um, I even forgot what our last point was. Uh, you're, and you're reliable. Billing yeah, issues. billing issues, you, you know, quality, yeah. Yeah, those three or four points, wherever you want to segment those. Yeah, I mean, if there's enough guys that need something like that, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested in, and I'd entertain the possibility of looking at putting something together. If it, I mean, I, I really wouldn't want to do it for one or two guys. It probably wouldn't be, honestly, real worth my time and effort. But if there was, you know, five or ten guys that wanted to do something like that, I mean, we could put something together for them. It'd be real uh, quick and easy okay. and well, inexpensive. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll put the challenge out there to our, our listeners, you know, if, if we can get – you know, email me. And if you got five or 10 people that are interested in doing this, then we'll have Rich put together a, a package that uh, be a, that we can make available to, to spray foam contractors. I wish I had yeah, more I, complicated I, and tricky things to tell you, but that's really all I would do. I mean, that's the totality of what I would do. 
No, you're right. I mean, you know, I think so many of us try to overcomplicate marketing and, and it's like, you know, you got to break it down to, you know, what, what are you really trying to accomplish and how do we make that easy? And it's really about how do we get our message in front of where the eyeballs are looking, you know, in, in the, the cheapest, most effective way okay, possible. Well, let me give you one other suggestion or just idea. This is just a crazy fun idea, okay? Okay, so this is a strategy for this type of scenario where we've got a very defined target market. It's a fairly small target market. This is what we call a knockdown list. So here's what you do. You take the 200 and then you look at it very uh, carefully and you say, okay, out of these 200, let's pick five or 10 or 20 that we really, 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 really want to be our customers. Okay. Like your highest, maybe they fit your profile the best, maybe they're the biggest volume, whatever, however you decide they are. So pick, let's just say 10, 10 out of the 200. Then what you do is you get really, really creative with those, with those 10. Now, the reason it's only 10 is it's going to cost money. So you can do crazy things like, man, I forgot how much it is. But uh, if you take a box like the size of a shoebox and you fill it with pennies, it weighs okay. like 40, 48 pounds. And it's, okay. it's something like it's something like something like $50 worth of pennies. It's not that expensive. And you take that and you uh, put that in a box and you go deliver it over to their office. And you just stick it on their desk and people come in and they're like, what on earth is this? And then you put some clever message in there. I don't even know. It doesn't even matter what the clever message is. The message is something about, hey, you know, if you're trying to save a couple pennies on, on spray foam, you know, no, look, look no further. And then on 4th of July, go down to the, you know, uh, every, I think every place has this where you can drive down on the interstate about 30 miles outside of town into the fireworks store, get a bunch of fireworks, stick them in a shoebox, go over there and stick them on their desk. And then the next month, find something else crazy stick it in a box, go put it on their desk, send it UPS, drop it off with the receptionist. And you're going to talk about getting people's attention. These people will know exactly who, who you are. are. Yeah. It costs a little bit of money. Let's say you spent $20 average per month on 10 guys. There's another 200 bucks. Big deal. What are the, what are those clients worth? If they're, we already said they're your highest, most valuable prospects that you're going after. Do it. You just got to be remembered. That's what consistency and frequency do. That's also what putting cool, weird, crazy stuff in people's face will do. Now, would you, would you do that above and beyond? Like, because I see a lot of stuff like that for hey, I'm I'm having problems talking with the decision maker. But what would you still do that in cases where like where hey, you've got your salesperson, or maybe yeah. maybe if you're a smaller company where you're yourself, you're you're the salesperson, and you've already you know, got their attention and you can go in there, you can get a meeting about any time, you can go bid an, another project, but you know, for whatever reason that, hey, we're just not ready to use you yet, or maybe you're not cheap enough uh, bid for them or, or whatever it might be, would you still use that more expensive approach to, and what would be the, the rationale be behind doing that? The rationale is you want to make, you want to make quadruple, double, tri triple, quadruple, sure, that they know exactly who you are. I, I, there's a guy here in, in the Fort Worth area that built a $70 million box company. Like people, companies that, man, like Motorola was one of their customers. They manufacture stuff comes off the line and they put it in these brown shipping containers that get sent off to Best Buy, right? They provided okay. those brown boxes. They use this strategy like gold. Oh my gosh, like gold with all kinds of companies, big and small. I remember uh, just uh, one of the things that we did for them is uh, we sent, remember when Snuggies were a big deal? Remember Snuggies? Oh, yeah. A yeah. blanket with sleeves? We sent Snuggies to everyone on their knockdown list. And then we found out that they were such a hit that we went back and we gave five Snuggies to everyone on their knockdown list because everybody in the office wanted one because it was so stupid and funny. We sent, the, we sent the craziest things. We sent fake lottery tickets to them so that they could go prank people with them. I mean, you, you name it, we sent the craziest things. You just kind of get remembered, man. And if you're, if you're putting that kind of effort in time and, and a, yes, a little bit of money, remember, we're not doing that for 200 people. We're doing that for 10 or five or two or 11 or 25, whatever you can afford in your budget. But it's got to be consistent and there's got to be a frequency involved with it. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea when it becomes an interactive thing. Like you said, like the fake lottery ticket where they can prank other people or whatever it might be where they, they, uh, they start talking about it in the office or they're, they're taking what you gave them and, and sharing it and showing it. And now they're spreading your brand throughout that, that office place. And it's not just that box to that one person. You did, uh, shocking cigarette lighters. Okay. You know, oh, yeah. You, you uh -huh. go to do it and it yeah. shocks you. He yeah. said, uh, I, "This sounds. Real, you're gonna, you guys are going to think I'm some kind of nut, but I'm telling you, this it, it's, it's so crazy. Out. It just might work. You ever seen these little, uh, like a little key fob thing with a button on it, 
and it, there's a speaker and you put it under somebody's chair. And when you push the button, it sounds like they farted. Mm -hmm. They would send this over to people. And, and there was a, there's a, there's a psychological principle behind it, which is everybody wants to be the center of attention. So when you give that to somebody, they go around pranking everybody in the office. They're the center of attention and you get the credit for making them the center of attention. So here's what you shouldn't do. Nothing. What most people are doing in these business to business situations, they're just hitting the phone. They're showing up. They're doing traditional sales it is, is very slow going. Yeah. And that's what everybody else is doing too. And yeah. so you become just one of everybody else. It's annoying Yeah, for everybody. I like that's that. It. I have no other advice for you. I would literally just do that. Oh, 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 oh,